What if the biggest IBS breakthrough of 2025 isn't a probiotic, isn't a prebiotic, and isn't even colostrum? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a brand new IBS review that explains how a type of supplement called mucoprotectants can help rebuild your gut barrier and why these substances could change the way we treat digestive symptoms. You'll learn how these mucoprotectants support the gut in a totally different way than most supplements. Then stick around till the very end because I'm going to show you one option you can go with if you want to try out this approach. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, pharmacist and gut health expert. In this video, we're going to be discussing a brand new IBS review that just came out this week. It's titled Mucoprotectants in Gut Barrier Mechanisms of Action in Clinical Applications in IBS. Is there a possible role? It gives an in-detail look of the intestinal lining and some of the compounds that protect it that seem to have a really big role in preventing IBS symptoms. Just to lay a little bit of a foundation, what exactly is IBS. Very quickly, I consider IBS just to be a collection of symptoms that don't seem to have a known root cause if you were to do certain scans at the doctor's office or gastroenterologist's office. Even though you can't see it on typical scans, IBS affects countless people and can seriously disrupt daily life even if it's not life-threatening. It can also be really expensive, especially when you try a lot of treatments that don't work. One of the biggest underlying issues in IBS is having a weak or leaky gut lining. When this gut lining barrier breaks down, it can trigger inflammation, which can lead to bloating, pain, and even non-digestive symptoms. All right, so here's how your gut lining actually works and why it matters. So if you look at this image right here, very first section right on top, we have the lumen, which is the open space in the small intestine. Then we have the mucus layer, which is a slimy coating that's supposed to be acting as a barrier to keep some of these bacteria and allergens out from these cells where we don't want them to get. After that is the epithelial barrier or the gut lining, which is is a single layer of cells. This is the most common thing that's referred to when you hear the term leaky gut. That would mean that these cells in like the red rectangles with the pink uh, projections coming up top, which are called villi, when these cells get spaced apart, that is what we, we don't want to happen. This is what is considered leaky gut. And this means that some of these bacteria, allergens, and toxins, which are these little black dots, actually can pass through these cells and get into the bloodstream and also activate your immune system. And we see right here, these mucoprotectants, they seem to be forming some sort of a barrier between the mucus layer and the enterocytes, which are the small intestinal cells, so that we are going to be preventing leaky gut. And we'll talk more about this soon. I showed you a few reasons here why leaky gut can happen, which are SIBO, because there's extra bacteria there. I also showed you toxins, allergens. Besides this, things like chronic stress, poor diet with a lot of highly processed foods, antibiotic use, alcohol, vitamin D, deficiency, chronic NSAID use such as ibuprofen or Advil for a long period of time. These are all a few of the things that can cause leaky gut. All right, so we know what the gut barrier is. We know what leaky gut is. How do these mucoprotectants fit in? As I showed before, these mucoprotectants are meant to form a protective film on your gut lining. This is actually a type of biofilm that they form. If you are familiar with certain conditions like SIBO, biofilm is typically used in a negative way, but in this case, these are actually positive biofilms that are forming to protect your cells. And they're doing so with the intent to do three things. Number one, block bacteria and toxins from attaching to your small intestinal lining and growing there and also preventing them from entering your bloodstream. Two is strengthening your gut barrier function. This means preventing leaky gut. And three is reducing inflammation, which is good because this will indirectly have a positive impact on so many other body functions. So what these mucoprotectants are not is they are not probiotics, which are intended just to add live bacteria to the gut and they don't directly address leaky gut. They're not prebiotics, which are the fibers that feed your gut bacteria and can worsen bloating at certain times, such as for people that have SIBO. And then they're not digestive enzymes, which just help by breaking down food, but don't repair or protect your gut barrier. Breaking down a few promising ones from the study, we have gel and tannate, which I'm not going to talk about a ton in this video. We have xyloglucan, which is derived from tamarind seeds. As mentioned here, it forms a protective film over the intestinal mucosa, protecting against pathogens and improving barrier function. And also, no, it's not broken down by digestive enzymes. And then third, we have pea proteins and tannins. And then right here, we have a summary of the clinical studies on mucoprotectants that were done in humans. The results all the way on the right seem to be positive in all of these 
trials. All right, so we know what IBS is, we know what leaky gut is, we know how it happens and why it's so important. And now we know a little bit about what these mucoprotectants are, how they protect the gut, and a few examples of what substances can be used as these mucoprotectant agents. And if you haven't heard of these before, I'm not really surprised because these aren't really being talked about very much, which comes as a surprise to me because as a pharmacist and somebody who struggled with SIBO and relentless bloating for almost a decade, I know for a fact that there's a need for more effective, quicker acting, better solutions for IBS so people can feel better sooner. So because of this reason and because so many people can stand to benefit from it, I took two of these mucoprotectants, which were tamarind seed powder, which contains the mucoprotectant xyloglucan and pea protein powder and combined them into my own personal gut health and bloating supplement blow blocker. There's already been a lot of previous research done with these exact ingredients in blow blocker. So between this and having countless other people try the product and get really good results, oftentimes as quick as one hour, reading this review doesn't come as a huge surprise to me because we already know that this method works, but I'm still really happy that more attention and focus is being put on this new potential solution for IBS symptoms because for a lot of people, this may not be something that you've tried or even heard of. So even if you feel like you've tried everything for IBS and nothing really seems to be working, something like blow blocker that contains these mucoprotectant ingredients might be something that you can benefit from. If you want to learn more and shop, you can go down to blueorchardwellness.com, link down in the description below. That is all for today. If you found the video insightful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. In the comment section down below, please let me know, are you somebody that's been diagnosed with IBS or deal with IBS symptoms? And if yes, what sort of stuff have you tried so far? What has worked and what has not worked? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.